Good morning, everybody. And uh, today is Friday morning. Uh, what about just a little bit after 4 a.m. local time, 4:09 looks like. Uh, we are currently southbound on Interstate 15, um, coming up on I-10 right now, right here at the Fontana and uh, Ontario border, California. They're coming over, aren't you? Uh, yep. Anyway, by the way, he kind of favored the left side of his lane for a second there, made me think he was looking to his left to uh, see if he was clear or whatever. Alright, uh, it is time to make a delivery of that load of eggs that I picked up last. Um, that I picked up at Vital Farms in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, it's going to be going to Kiki in Chino, California. Uh, we're only we're maybe a dozen or so miles away right now from the customer. Um, now, I do have my my Google actually giving me route directions right now, but I'm not actually going to follow them. I already know my way there. Uh, I only have it giving me directions so I know how about how close I am in miles to the customer. Uh, I kind of use that to help judge when to start, uh, when I want to start vlogging, so I don't make the videos too long for you guys. <laughs> um, Alright, so while we're on that topic though, so Google wants me to continue on 15 to the Cantu Galliano Ranch Road exit, which is a little bit further south, uh, uh, not too far south of the 60 freeway. Uh, I see, uh, yeah, left going on over here? Do I need a little enclosure? I can't tell. Uh, yeah, this. I can't tell if it's. Uh, yeah, we'll find out. Cause my, I'm gonna get on the 60 westbound, but wasn't sure what was going on there with that. Uh, and then I gotta kind of. Trying to time this with SCs. This guy coming over kind of fast makes me think he's going to come over as well to get on the 60 freeway. So we're uh, going to plan ahead on stuff like this going on. Uh, possibly need to uh, make space there. What do we have here? Right lane closed ahead. Alright, so as I was trying to say here, yeah, Google is trying to suggest going west across Cantu Galliano Ranch Road. Um, now, I know that I, you can actually use a, tr a drive a truck on Cantu Galliano Ranch up to a certain extent. Uh, but as you get into the Chino area, I know there's a certain area there because of a friend of mine who's always in that area that they made an area there that used to be a truck area and no longer truck legal uh, kind of over in the neck of the woods so we're going to avoid that particular route I'd rather stay on the bigger roads and my plan is get on 60 westbound and we'll get off uh, the 60 at Euclid Avenue or Highway 83 and we'll take the uh, Euclid to the south and that will take us right up to the key to, uh, distribution center Alright, I have been to this customer once before, uh, but it's been a long time. It's been, uh, according to Google, at least five years since I was last there. So I don't really remember my, I remember going there once before, but I don't remember anything about the layout or anything. Uh, I did a little bit of scouting on it. Um, it looks like I want to go around to the south side of the facility cross over to Fern Avenue, which is just to the west of Euclid, and then come back up Fern, um, and then I think one of the reviews said something about uh, you enter from the northwest side and exit from the southwest side or something. Uh, you're going to play nice car because... Uh, uh, yeah. And one more lane over. Okay. Yeah, but if you go in that way, it's, everything's on the blind side of you, so I don't know. And, and I, I couldn't clearly tell if there's a, like a lane over to the, uh, over on the east side of the 
warehouse right next to Euclid Avenue or not. Um, so we're gonna, I'm going to have to get my memory refreshed on some of the stuff there, unfortunately. It is what it is. Uh, I know I, I'm pretty sure I don't have any prior uh, uh, vlog footage of this place. Most certainly. Uh, Alright. Uh, Alright, so let's. Uh, so now you know what's going on here. Let's talk about how the trip went on the way over here. So you guys, uh, you guys who watched my pickup video, uh, I know Carl Green, you asked about... Uh, Hope the load scaled okay after because I talked in that uh, that video about how uh, one of the guys in my Facebook group said something about uh, needing to get reworked like two or three times before they got it right. Um, so it turned out it scaled just fine right off the bat, but yeah, it was definitely a tail heavy load. Uh, I think it was 11.5 on the steers. 29 something on the drives and 33 6 on the tandems if I recall so it was a yeah it was a tight uh, we're three and a half miles out from Euclid by the way um, now yeah remind me not to ever stop in Springfield uh, at the Flying J again James Ewing you're uh, yeah that's the same place you and I met up at that one time uh, tell you what uh, yeah I had a, a situation there where I had like an angel one on one shoulder and a devil on the other giving me conflicting suggestions on how to handle a situation I encountered there um, all right so the situation was I yeah, I get over there I scale the load and as soon as I get through scaling I circle back around because I was gonna get fuel I got good prices there and yeah when I get to the I go over to the very first uh, the, the fuel lane right next to the cat scale to get my fuel. I set everything up, I get out, start, uh, you know, I, I put my uh, driver's side thing in, and while I'm doing that, I see this guy walking up toward the building from uh, either the other end of the, uh, you know, the, the east end of the parking lot, or from the, down the street, uh, like whatever the hell's down there, I don't know. I haven't even really bothered to look at if they're, if they're residential stuff or anything like that over there but all right anyway he walks past my truck while I'm busy uh, putting the passenger side uh, dispenser in my truck and now yeah, when I get through getting my fuel I pull forward the courtesy lane and then go inside and you now I was gonna use the restroom get a drink like normal get my drink go to pay for it and all right so backtrack here they were shortly after I pulled into the lane the fuel lane um, a, another truck with apparently a team pulled into the lane right next to me now it was a husband and wife couple and because uh, I yeah when I was uh, getting my I was setting up my fuel or whatever I remember watching the woman get out and start walking her dog uh, she went across my lane and over across to the other side of the Fuel Island. I mean, on the other side of the Catskill, uh, walking her dog, taking piss, whatever. Um, and anyway, she and I are both inside the building. I'm not. I'm not having any interaction with her. I know uh, women have security issues there, so especially at that hour. Um, anyway, she was getting sir helped in front of me by the cashier, and then I get helped. And I, yeah, we're both walking back out. I'm kind of following her back out the building. And on the way to the door, because there's a foyer right there, you know, you have the, the door that goes to the outside. Yeah, you know, if you're coming in from outside, there's the double doors right there. And then there's another set of double doors just a few feet in, you know, inside uh, to the interior. So the, the interior area there, it was what I'm calling the foyer. All right, half a mile out. Um, the same guy who I just saw walking up. Now, mind you, he's not a small, not, not a very small guy. I told you guys uh, I'm 6'3", I weigh 225, uh, something uh, between 225 and 230, so I'm not a small guy. And this guy uh, comes up. Uh, about he looked similar in height. Now he was probably at least a good six, yeah, you know, one six two, six three ish himself, and. Uh, easily similar 
weight as me, and maybe even just a tad heavier, I don't know. But, um, yeah, he comes up and he's, you know, he holds the door open for the woman first. And when she comes up, and when she's coming through, uh, he says something, just something like, just basic pleasantry thing to her. Um, what, um, you know, just, here you go, ma'am, or whatever, something along that line, just something simple. Didn't, uh, did, but I didn't have any other interaction with her. But then I come up uh, behind them, and uh, yeah, I'm like, hey, thank you, sir. And it's like, you know, they're, they're double doors, though. Normally, I don't sit there and let some have someone hold the door open for me when they're double doors. It's like, why do you need to waste your time holding the door open for me when I'm perfectly able-bodied? And like, what's the point of there being two doors there anyway? But anyway, that's a, that's kind of a side I've talked about already before. Um, but he was already holding the door open for me, so I was like, all right, we'll go ahead and uh, I'll just go ahead and go through the one he's already holding, and I, and I thanked him. I oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Well, I, I, I make good eye contact, and I, I catch that he's kind of staring at me, like sizing me up or like he wants to say something or whatever, but I'm... And then, sure enough... Um, he starts asking me, he starts telling me some story about how, um, yeah, he has a, like his family in uh, Mississippi, that's where he's from originally, and he's kind of trucking with a friend, whatever, and, and he's trying to get back there, and, uh, yeah, and he's wanting, you know, basically he asked me if, I, if there's way I can help him get back there, and I'm like, yeah, you said you're going to Mississippi? And he goes, yeah, that's right. I'm like, well, I'm heading west, so I, uh, sorry, I can't help you there. And I, I can't have passengers in my truck anyway if they're not documented by. Uh, yeah, I have to have because uh, there's an insurance requirement not to pay. It's actually a DOT requirement for you to uh, have a have any riders in your truck declared. Uh, now, if you're an owner op and you're the owner of the company, then you can write. You know, you can declare them. Uh, right off, you know, because you own the company, but for me, I don't own the truck, uh, and I have to get permission from the company to have a rider in my truck, even if it's my own kids, I have to do it, all right, four miles down the road, to Bickford Avenue, um, so anyway, it's like, you know, I'm already sniffing bullshit, because I just watched the guy walk up from the corner of the lot, thinking uh, you know, he probably came from a neighborhood back that way somewhere or whatever the hell's over there, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I'm like, I can't help you out there. And then he's like, oh, well, do you have, you know, uh, do you at least have anything, any way you can help me out here? Uh, like, you know, like he was wanting money, but he didn't actually say he wanted money. And I'm like, yeah, sorry, man, I don't keep cash on me, so I can't help you. So he's like, yeah, you know, he's kind of threw a slight little fit over that. Not much, but, you know, but then, you know, he was on his way into the building when I was on my way out. So there's the more suspicion there. Um, I go to head out, like, after I, I told him point blank, I, I, I don't have money to help him with. And I can't, uh, you know, even if I have money, I'm not going to help with that. I don't give people cash. Too many people are exactly like this guy, bullshitting, uh, giving you bullshit reasons that they want money. I don't mind helping hom uh, homeless people to some extent, but people who are just uh, being fucking mooches and whatever want their drug and alcohol habits uh, being funded by by bleeding heart people. No, uh, you're not going to find a bleeding heart in my truck, I'll tell you that. I'm not that dumb. Alright, anyway... So I start walking out uh, the other door, and then, uh, you know, and in this kind of situation, especially at this time of day, it was like 12.30 at night, uh, 1 a.m., I don't know, somewhere around that time. And, you know, one of, the one of my fa uh, channels that I like to watch on YouTube, uh, Active Self Protection. Now, I've talked about that channel before. Well, the guy on there, John Korea, he regularly talks about the five rules of stupid. And one of them is being uh, at a gas station at, you know, in between the hours of, I think, 1 and 5 a.m., if I recall, or, or midnight and 5, whatever the hell it was, I don't remember. Uh, that's, because a lot of the stupidity happens at truck stops or gas stations in the middle of the night, or early morning hours. So, 
I'm thinking that, and I think of some of these other, like, uh, security issues, you know, personal safety issues, and even though I'm about the same height as him, and I, like I said, I know I can fight, and, uh, you know, and I have uh, very unorthodox strategies I'll use on people to, uh, uh, you know, along with my jiu-jitsu, but you don't know what the other guy, you know, you have no idea what really the other guy knows, but what kind of experience he has with uh, anything. This guy just, uh, just has, I have, have some kind of formal boxing experience or any other kind of experience of, uh, with combat that could uh, be a, a bad matchup for you. So I always try to be respectful of what that person might possibly know. Even if I'm pretty certain I can kick their ass, I always treat it like there's a possibility they might know something more than I think they do. Or they might come at me with with a force multiplier, you know, a knife or gun or something. So I'm aware of that. And I don't want this guy behind me. I want him in my view and not within punching distance of me and stuff. That way, if you know, if he does try to take a swing, I'm already in position, uh, I'm already seeing it coming, and I'm already in a position to defend against it or whatever. That's my thought process there, so. I go to leave, and he starts coming out the door with me, and I'm like, and he's within like, you know, like a, a long reach punching distance of me. I'm like, yeah, I don't like this situation here. So, you know, I, as I'm coming out, I'm looking to my left, uh, you know, to watch him with my peripheral vision to make sure he doesn't do something stupid because as soon as I saw anything uh, remotely stupid coming from him, uh, I was gonna, I was gonna counter it. Well, you know, we both end up going out and, I, and I'm thinking, well, why the hell is this guy walking back out in the building when he just was on his way in? It's like, what the hell is this guy really up to here? And then he starts talking about, uh, Dude, you gotta speed up because it's a 55 zone. But yeah, I'm only a mile away from my turn, so I don't really want to go around this guy. Um, <laughs> it's just annoying. I even got a red light coming up right here anyway. Uh, but yeah, this guy ended up started saying some st shit about uh, you know, how people lie. I'm like, yeah, you. Uh, I'm thinking of myself. I didn't say it to him because I'm not trying to escalate the situation. Because uh, I am one to do it. And uh, but I, again, if you escalate, you never know what kind of stupidity is going to come. Uh, no trucks on Kimball. All right. All right. Interesting. Oh no, I've. I think I've been to a customer over this way before, though. The truck route straight ahead and to the right, anyway. All right. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you, you want to suggest that I'm lying to you, but here you are telling some complete bullshit story to me about how you got family in Mississippi and that you're riding with your brother or friend or whoever the hell it was on a truck and you're trying to get back to Mississippi. It's like, yeah, you, don't fucking come to me about people lying because I'll, yeah, I'll come point at you saying uh, you got to take a look in the mirror before you start calling me a liar. Uh, yeah, I'm not stupid. And I'm hoping this guy did get kind of a clue that, hey, because the way I, keep, um, I carry myself, now, I don't believe in fighting. Because like I said, you never know what you might, you're going to come up against. And I don't want to end up uh, with somebody in the hospital or morgue and the other person in jail, either one of us, if I don't need it to be that way. Um, all right, this, uh, right, this light right here, Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, there is a drive, uh, um, oh, yeah, it is right, because I see this truck here in the lot facing, uh, t facing southbound, so. There's a sign right there saying no trucks on, uh, Bickmore. I'm like, hey, dude, my customer's right here. I have to be over here. They don't tell me I, I can't be on this road. Fuck you. There's a truck route sign right here. Are you fucking kidding me? Alright. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's I always be respectful of what the person might be capable of, even if they are smaller and 
seemingly not, oh, but anyway, the other, but I was also trying to get at, uh, I think this is where I'm going to be exiting from. Yeah, it's exit only. I see signs on there saying exit only. All right, this is going to be Fern right here. We're going to make a right turn, and there should be an entrance over here on the north end of the building. Let's see which way this car is going first, because I need that left turn lane. All right, yeah. Okay, I do kind of remember this going on here last time I was here. Um, but yeah, anyway, some some other ways to think about personal safety and security is how you carry yourself. You know, I'm not a small guy, and the way I carry myself, I walk very deliberately. Um, is this guy just parked here, or is he coming into the line? Uh, I'm talking about this northern... Or this, he's not on his brake, so he might be just parked here. Double check. Yeah, I think he's just parked here because he's, he, he's. I don't see his brake lights on now. He's not even in the driver's seat. So yeah, he's just parked here. All right, we're gonna come right into here. Um, so anyway, some of the things that you can make yourself less a target is by uh, you know, walking more upright, you know, not slouching, whatever, walking deliberately, staying aware of your surroundings, things that are going on. Um, I think we're supposed to go around to the, the south end of the building, and when you get to the front end of that, that's when you check in, if I recall. So, but anyway, I do all this, and Something else to consider. Uh, is there no way to that thing there or something? I don't know. Are we supposed to park on a street to check in now or something? I was under the impression that you... Yeah, this guy's... This guy's getting out of his truck and walking up to the office. Uh, looks like there's... Oh, shit, this is a mess. Okay, this guy, there's an open, I think that's an open spot. No, it's not an open spot. Fuck. Okay, there is an opening over here. I was wondering, because I, yeah, I, th I thought we were supposed to go over this little alley thing over here. I just couldn't tell that there was open over here, so. I think someone must have told him to go uh, drive around over here and, and get mine over here. Alright, so something else though. With me, because of my uh, my background, I have cauliflower ear right here. Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, uh, you only you tend to only get that from grappling experience most of the time. You know, judo, jiu-jitsu, or wrestling. Uh, guys with those kind of backgrounds are usually going to have this kind of condition. Uh, and I have it very noticeably. Uh, not uh, not the worst you will ever see, but. Uh, very noticeably have uh, that condition on my right ear so if people are looking at me you know you can tell right away just by looking at me uh, and noticing the ear that I probably know something about something uh, I don't I'm not necessarily gonna let you know what I know about anything but um, it's a big clue that um, might not be the easiest person to take down or beat up uh, beat in a fight uh, if you do try to start stuff so uh, that's all I'm getting at here it's uh, I have a number of factors that make you make it easier for me to be assured of my own safety versus maybe someone smaller and thinner framed and uh, or even a woman or something 
Um, so it's harder for people to just want to bully me because of that. Um, but as I say, I've, my jiu-jitsu background too, I can tell you I've, uh, I've trained with a woman who actually uh, I'm, I'm good friends with uh, both of them. Uh, husband and wife couple, uh, we all started training around the same time too, but uh, the wife, she's only about 135 pounds and uh, we had some of the best sparring matches that I've ever had and she's actually uh, she's actually been able to tap me out before in, in, in matches, so um, yeah, someone that small, uh, don't take them uh, as like that lightly. Alright, anyway, um, I'm gonna get uh, basically wait on this guy, and then we'll uh, we'll check in after yeah, after he comes up to it and pulls forward or whatever. Uh, I sent my depart my in my uh, rival call and all that, and hopefully get knocked in after that. All right, guys, we got a dock door assignment, door 29. Um, I do need to take. Uh, all right, so when you dock in here. Leave your doors closed and sealed. Um, don't actually bump the dock either. Um, I am going to need to take my uh, my enforcer lock off there first before also hitting the dock. Uh, let me turn that off so I'm not blinding pride while he's trying to back into his door. Alright, this is 36 and 35 right here, so probably right here next to this other JCT. That's 32. All right, so two over from him. I'll wait on this guy because uh, it's a little too close to my setup setup area that I want to use. I'm gonna do a U-turn style setup. I, um, I don't know. I might be able to get a straight back, but I might. I think we're gonna be just a tad short. So I will probably just do a, a kind of a modified straight back slash u-turn style kind of setup I guess I'll call it this guy's gonna close open his doors now isn't he yeah that wasn't very smart walking between those guys all right, walking behind that guy's truck. Yeah, this is 29 here. All right, so. Yeah, there's not enough room here for a straight back, so I'm gonna do a U-turn setup. I was a little, I was a little bit heavier on the the blind side coming in at first. So, all right now, I see it just that forward right turn squared me right up with the door after I, cause I I let the trailer rotate a little bit faster because I felt like I was a little bit too much to the blind side, and so I intentionally let it overshoot. And then once I once I got to that point where get in this door before this guy. <laughs> Alright. Uh, actually, let me back up all the way. Yeah, that guy still hasn't hit the, hasn't uh, finished back in yet. <laughs> I'm not trying to make fun of his backing skills uh, he's like I said you I don't know I mean there's times where even I'll have backings that don't go quite so easily and like and like where I'm just being stupid or something <laughs> it happens all right so what we're gonna do now is wait to, uh, yeah the low the lumper will actually come out to uh, actually we're gonna check in at door 21 and then the lumper will come out when they're ready to start unloading you um, yeah, and so that's, yeah, then I think that's when you'll open your doors. Yeah, yeah, this guy next to me, his doors are open, so yeah, you'll open your doors once the loader is ready to start unloading you. Um, 
then when we leave, we'll leave out that same driveway I was talking about earlier. All right, guys, we are uh, done unloading. Uh, it's actually, I got the lumper thing uh, actually uh, just over an hour ago. But, uh, let's see. We were supposed to exit out that way. Um, why is that truck nosed in over there? All right, anyway, yeah, it took over half an hour just to even get the money code from my dispatch. Uh, I don't know if there's something going on there uh, with the communication system. I haven't been able to get really much uh, contact with anybody on Qualcomm. Uh, they had to actually make a phone call. I think this guy is using the wrong driveway. Pretty sure it's exit only. Trying to get check. You're trying to check in? Yeah, you're at the wrong driveway. Go to the next one up. Yeah, go uh, go north on this street right here. The next driveway. Uh, come through the other driveway, and then there will be a like a lane on the other side of the building. Stop at the stop sign right over here. Um, Okay, so you're going to want to go to that driveway on that other side of the building. Okay. Wrap around. Uh, there will be like an alley on the other side of this building. Come down that alley, you're going to see a stop sign. Stop right there and then bring your bills to the, right there in the corner is the office you'll see. And then uh, you'll dock in and then check in at door 21 afterward. Alright. Okay, uh, with this venture, I think he might be better off just um, uh, going straight into the yard and doing a U-turn or something. That's what I think I would do, is he's already able to get into the yard now with me leaving. Uh, yeah, uh, I think this guy's... You know, You trying to you trying to check in? You trying to check in? Go to this driveway up here. Go to that driveway up there and then circle around to the alley on the other side and stop at the stop sign when you get over there. All right. Yeah, pickup driver getting all impatient like it. This guy is confused. He doesn't know where to go. It's uh, it's obvious. Uh, some people haven't been here before, and you know it only takes a minute. Like just be patient here. I'm trying to explain to him. It's and now look, this guy is being all like an asshole, and wow, dude. Alright, so once I was able to finally get the lumper uh, bill paid, which by the way was uh, $290. Uh, it was $295.80 actually for, uh, you know, with the, it was like a $5.80 uh, thing added on to the, the basic amount um, because I was using EFS money code. So, uh, yeah, it's not the cheapest place in the world for lumper fees if you don't like if, uh, if you're an owner op and you don't like paying lumpers but 
Yeah, hey, you get, you get invoice to the damn customer. It's, I don't know why people complain about paying bumper fees. Yeah, it doesn't, it ultimately doesn't come out of your pocket because you get reimbursed anyway. Most of, uh, for most of us. All right, um, so I do have a pre-plan to pick up a load out of our Tolleson drop yard. That is a uh, logger house or uh, Red Bull load. Um, I guess someone else is already picking it up. They're going to be dropping it in the yard. Uh, I'll be heading over there to go grab it and get it moving. Uh, I accepted the pre-plan, but I have the condition that uh, I'm going to need to swap off the load somewhere in route because I have to be back here in Southern Cal for my, uh, I have a dental appointment on Wednesday next week on when, on the 26th. And this load that I'm on my way to go grab, um, it delivers in, um, what was it, it was in Indiana somewhere on the 25th. I forget the name of that city, um, well, since I'm waiting here anyway. Power Distributing in Fort Wayne, Indiana is where, I'm going, where it's going to. Um, so yeah, I one delivers on the 25th, but I can't go from the 25th and be the very next day in California, so it's not going to work out. Uh, I'm going to be running on recaps as well. I only have about 10 and a half hours left on my 70 to work with today and then only 7 and change tomorrow uh, to work with tomorrow and got 10 plus hours coming back the following day so I can at least get it moving a uh, pretty good distance. Uh, maybe somewhere in the Midwest and then swap out. I don't know, maybe an Amarillo for something coming back to Cali uh, uh, on time for my appointment. But Alright. Um, not a bad experience there overall. It's just uh, the confusion. If you've never been here, if you don't do your scouting, you yeah, you could run into that kind of problem. Um, so just make sure you, you know, <laughs> don't make the same mistake that that guy just made trying to come in through the gate that is uh, that we don't come in through. I understand why he came through that gate though, or tried to come through that gate though, because uh, dude, you better not. I mean, because if you look at the building, you would want a sight sight into the dock doors. So it would be the natural belief that, um, is that you would want to you know, come to the building from that direction as well. So I totally get what that guy did there. It's, you know, it's, it's a totally legit mistake to make to me if, if, you don't, if you're not already familiar with the place. So. Alright, uh, but anyway, for now, we're just going to head, uh, I'm going to get out of here, wash out my trailer over in uh, Colton, Rialto, whatever you want to call that part of town, I forget, uh, we had uh, I-10 truck wash, with JCT does have a contract with them, I'm there regularly, and uh, from there, I'm gonna just go across 10 over to Tolleson, uh, go pick up that other load, uh, I probably will not be vlogging that pickup at the drop yard. I was just at that same drop yard not long ago. Uh, and I did vlog that one as well, so I don't see it really being necessary to vlog that. Um, so I, you know, I just plan on, I'll probably end up swapping loads somewhere en route and uh, Maybe that next load, uh, next vlog you'll actually see probably be another delivery vlog here in Southern Cal or something just before the appointment, for my dental appointment. Um, all right, otherwise, yeah, I might have just like a little odd and end uh, stuff to post in between there uh, now and then. All right, and, uh, so all right, you, know, you all have a great weekend. Um, hope you guys enjoyed watching. Uh, and then we'll see you on the next one, all right? Thanks.